Hey there! Welcome to this tutorial video, where we will be going through the basics of Composer Pro by building the classic intro project, a to-do app. Follow the steps and create your own to-do app. Let's create a new project and name it to-do, and choose the default theme for our app. Now we can see the view canvas, where the first page of our app is already initialized with two components, a headline and a paragraph. To the left we have the component library, from which we can drag and drop different components onto the view canvas. Components are used to build your app's user interface and include familiar things like paragraphs, buttons and images. Common core components are installed by default and always accessible from the component library, but you can find more in the component market. In the middle we have our view canvas, which displays the user interface for the current page in the app we are building. To the right we have the Properties sidebar, which allows us to change how components behave, such as editing the text label of a button or changing its styles. The Binding Editor, accessible by the button under each property, allows us to make the properties dynamic, so that for example the Add button is disabled if you have not yet filled out the label for your new to-do item. In the top left corner we see the name of our app and under it the name of the page we have opened. By clicking on the page name, we can open a list of all the pages in our app. Here we can create new pages and choose which page to edit. This preview is streaming from my iPhone, and you can see what our finished app will look like. We have a list of to-do items we can check on and off, an input field to type the label for new items, and a button to add them to the list. The items are sorted by showing the newest item first. Let's start building our app from scratch. Let's start by editing the headline for our page by clicking on the headline component and changing its content property to to-dos. Let's add an input field by dragging and dropping it from the component library, so we can input labels for our new to-do items. We can see all the properties of the input field in the right sidebar. As we did with the headline, we can change the label property and see it update on the view canvas. Next, let's add a button which adds our to-do items to our to-do list. Again, let's drag and drop it from the component library and change its label. Finally, let's add a checkbox field, which will eventually show all our to-do items as a list. To see our app running on an actual device, we can download the AppCover Preview app from the App Store or Google Play Store. After downloading the app, log in with your Composer Pro user, and then you can see the apps that you are working on. Let's open the To-Do app. We can see how the app in our view canvas is displayed on an actual device in real time. The preview you see here, like the final result, is a real native app. We can test it by changing for example our page headline, saving, and seeing how the view is immediately updated on our device. We can see our functioning input field, button, and checkbox we can tick on and off. At the moment these components do not do anything, as we haven't yet defined any logic or data for them. Let's do that now. We can define data resources for our app in the data section, found in the global toolbar at the top. For this example, let's add a new AppGyver cloud storage resource to store our to-do items. The AppGyver cloud storage is a quick and easy way to store data for demo and hobby projects. For more demanding production apps, you can connect to a data store of your choice with the REST API direct integration data resource type. Let's name our resource to do's and give it a short description. Next, we will have to define the schema of this resource. This means defining what kind of properties each record in this resource will have and what the expected data type is. For our app, each to do item will have a text type label property and a done property, which is of the true or false type. We will also give each item a created at property, which is of the date time type. As the key labels can't contain spaces, we can also add a more understandable title and description to each property if we want to. These are shown elsewhere in the Composer, such as when you're constructing logic around your data. Now that we have configured our data resource, let's save and return to the view canvas. We can create and view variables in the Variables tab. Variables are a way to store and access data while the app is running. They are in-memory only, so when you restart your app, variables are reset. In Composer, there are a few different types of variables, such as page and app variables. Data from data resources is also accessed via a special type of variables, data variables, which we'll be making use of now. We're going to create two data variables. 
The first one is going to contain a list of all the to-do items we have stored in our data resource. Let's create a new data variable from our data resource and call it to-do items. Since we want this variable type to include all our to-do items, let's choose collection of data records as the data variable type in the right sidebar. In addition to all to-do items, we will need a variable to store any new to-do items that we create in the app using the input field and the add item button. As these items do not exist in any resource until we click the add item button, we have to use a data variable of the new type to temporarily store the properties of the new item until we save it into the backend database. Let's name it new to do item and go back to the view canvas. Now we can bind the value of the input field to the label of the new to do item data variable. The binding can be done by clicking on the value property of the input field, selecting data and variables as the binding type, choosing data variable, and finally selecting to bind the value of the input field to the new to do item data variable and its property label. We can also define a preview value for the input, which is only used in the view canvas and does not affect the functioning of your app. Let's leave it empty this time, which means text describing the binding will be shown instead. In the view canvas, we can see that the input field is now bound to data, new to do item, label. This is only shown in the view canvas for development purposes and not in the actual app running on a device. Next, we want to show a checkbox field component for each to-do item in our backend. To do this, we'll need to use a repeat with property. The repeat with property is handy for displaying lists where each item in the list should be shown with the same component, but with different data. By clicking on the repeat with property, we can choose the source list for our repeat. Choosing data and variables, and then again data variable, we can find the to-do items variable and bind the repeat with property to it. In the view canvas, we can now see a ghost trail of checkbox components indicating that it is a repeating component. The checkbox is still labeled with a static text, but we'll want it to be labeled according to each item's label. Similar to the repeat with property, let's change the binding of the checkbox label. Click on the property, and now we can see a new binding type that came with the repeat with property, property of data item in repeat. Selecting that, we can choose the label property for each item. We'll do the same for the checkbox value, binding it to the done property of to-do items. In the preview, our list is still empty because we have not created any to-do items yet. To create them, we'll need to add some logic to the add to-do button. The button will eventually create a new to-do item with the label that is written in the input field and store it in the AppGyver Cloud storage. When we start to create items into the storage, they will also appear in the checkbox list. When we select the button component, we can see and define its logic in the logic canvas, which can be accessed at the bottom of the screen. In the logic canvas, we can define different logic flows triggered by events. The boxes you see are also known as logic nodes. For buttons, the default event is component tab, which is triggered when the button is pressed by the user. In the logic library to the left, we have a selection of flow functions, which are pieces of logic run by the app, such as taking a photo or setting a variable to a new value. We can use flow functions to build the logic for what we want to happen when the button is pressed. Common flow functions are shown right away, but you can find more in the flow function market. In this example, we'll want the button to create a new data record, so let's drag and drop the relevant flow function onto the logic canvas. Let's connect these nodes with a wire. The order of these nodes determines the order of the logic flow. In this example, the creation of a new to-do item happens after we click the button. Like components, flow functions also have properties we can bind to data in the right sidebar. For the creation of a new record, we can define to which resource the new record will be created, and define the create records properties according to the schema we defined in the beginning. As we only have one data resource, it gets automatically chosen for the resource name property. Clicking the property would allow us to switch between different resources. The record properties also get bound to an item object. Clicking on custom object, we can define the value for each property of the newly created to-do item. We'll bind the label of the new record to the label of the data variable new to-do item. The done property can be bound to a static false as a default value. To get the current date and time for the created app property, we'll need to use a formula function. Formula functions are a library of functions useful for accessing and transforming data. If you're familiar with formulas in Excel, then formula functions work in a similar way. In this case, we can use the now formula, 
to get the current date and time. The ID for each item is generated automatically as they are created in the data resource. Now we have set up the logic for the button to create new to-do items with the correct properties, and we can see it in action in our preview as the created items show up on the checkbox list. The checkmarks display the default value of each to-do item, which we set as false. However, at this stage, checking the box doesn't do anything, so if you check a box, update the page, the checkboxes turn false again. To save the checkbox value, we'll have to add logic to it, similar to the add item button. Looking at the logic canvas for the checkbox, we have an event called checkbox on change, which is triggered anytime the checkbox value changes. Let's add an update record flow function after it and connect the nodes. The correct resource is automatically chosen and we'll have to define an item ID so the flow function knows which item to update. We can find the ID in property of data item in repeat. In the record properties, we can set the value of the property done to be the output value of another node that is connected to this flow function, in this case the checkbox on change event. Now the item's done value is determined by the checkbox value, which is either true or false, and the value gets saved into our data resource. In the preview, if we check a box, leave the app and return, we can see the box is still checked. Now our to-do app is fully functional, but we want to list our items so that the newest ones are shown first. We can do this by sorting the list according to the created app property. The sorting can be done in the repeat with property with the help of a formula. Currently, the repeat with is only bound to to-do items, but let's add the following formula to it. Sort by key to-do items created at with a reverse. Sort by key sorts the data variable to-do items according to the key created at but does it in an ascending order by default, so the oldest to-do items would be first. With reverse, we can change the order, showing the newest items first instead. After saving, we can see in the preview that the items now get sorted according to their creation date, and each new item that we add appears first on the list. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial that showcased the basics of Composer Pro. Check out the AppGyver Academy to see even more tutorials, onboarding videos, and lessons about Composer Pro. See you soon!